Coming up on Early Texas Today, a Colleen fire station is closing its doors for good. We'll explain. Plus, an Ohio family is mourning the loss of a teen boy gunned down by police there. And a couple of kids are being called heroes after stopping a car thief. It's all happening on this Friday, September 16th, 2016. Early Texas Today starts right now. Start here. Expect more. This is Early Texas Today. Good morning and welcome to Early Texas Today. I'm Imani Payne. Happy Friday. We made it to the end of the work week, so congratulations on that. Uh, and in just a little while, we're going to get a check-in with Bill Heckey. He's here today, as I'm sure most of you know, Wes, how his last day was yesterday. He went up to Dallas, so we'll be checking in with Bill to get a look at weather and kind of see what's going on with the forecast. We'll look to see if there's any rain chances so that everyone can kind of schedule their plans around that. And we'll also look at that seven day forecast as well. So let's go ahead and get a check on that weather bill. Well, we are going to be looking at a uh, pretty quiet round of weather. Now we've got some activity well out to the northwest of us and it's going to be moving in as we get into, oh, I think tomorrow morning. I'm not seeing too much. Still getting dressed because my microphone didn't work. So. <laughs> Bear with me. We got a forecast going. So I'll just hold it. Well, Imani, we've got a little tiny one mainly out to the northwest of us. But anyway, we'll do it like this until we can get a mic that works. But the only thing that I'm seeing now is a little bit of cloud cover moving in from the west. And we do have an area of precipitation that we're going to watch work the area. Now, if you notice on the uh, rainfall forecast, it's all out to the northwest. You get out to Stephenville, Comanche area. And there's this area that's moving right through here that's going to create an outflow boundary, but that'll just barely get into the area. So we're not going to really see too awfully much from it. And then we will uh, probably see some showers tomorrow morning. We'll be back with more right after this and right after we get a mic for you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, sounds good, Bill. Thank you. And we begin this morning in Bell County where six firemen are forced to move to a new fire station. Officials say the firehouse near Skylark Field Airport will shut down next week. The equipment will be relocated to a fire station near West Veterans Memorial Boulevard. The city says the closure is because the station wasn't being used enough. Within the last year, the station has only been called out by citizens three times. Colleen officials say the closure will not affect any jobs. And a West man accused of killing his girlfriend two years ago wrapped up day three of his trial. 45-year-old David Zarniak was charged with murder after his 21-year-old girlfriend, Caitlin Reed, was found dead with a gunshot wound to the chest inside a home in West. The defense called multiple witnesses to the stand, including a DNA expert and Zarniak's cousin. The defense is arguing Caitlin Reed died as a result of suicide. The trial is expected to continue into next week. And community members in Columbus, Ohio, came together last night to remember 13-year-old Tyree King, who was shot and killed by police. Officer Brian Mason fatally shot the teen after he ran from police investigating an armed robbery. They say at one point King turned to police while pulling what was believed to be a gun from his waistband. And that's when Officer Mason opened fire. King was shot several times and taken to a local hospital where he later died. It was later determined that the teen's weapon was in fact a BB gun. And Sandra Bland's family has reached a settlement with the Waller County Sheriff's Office right here in Texas. Bland was a 26-year-old woman who was found dead in a jail cell last year after a routine traffic stop turned confrontational. While the family will receive a $1.9 million settlement, Bland's mother says she's glad part of the settlement will help bring needed change to jail procedures in Waller County. No, no. Now you have to hold your people accountable. And these are the things we'd like to see. People have been crying out for legislation for a long time. People have been crying out for changes in jails for a long time. Among the changes, the Sheriff's Department will install automatic sensors to assure accurate and timely cell checks. They'll also have a nurse on duty around the clock.
And in our election coverage, new attacks and counterattacks from presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump as Clinton returns to campaigning after her pneumonia diagnosis. Brian Moore has the latest for us from Washington. Hillary Clinton back in action, embracing the Latino voters she's counting on to keep Donald Trump out of the White House. We need to stop him conclusively in November in an election that sends a message that even he can hear. At Trump's evening event in New Hampshire, he had his own message for Latinos. We are going to protect your jobs. We are going to build up your schools and we are going to deliver safety and opportunity for your children. I feel nice. As Clinton resumed her campaign, she told supporters in North Carolina she appreciated the rest, but conceded to reporters that disclosure of her pneumonia could have been handled better. I thought uh, I was going to be fine, and I thought that uh, there wasn't really any reason to make a big fuss about it. On The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon. Go ahead. Trump's offering transparency on a question America has been asking for years, whether that's really his hair. Brian Moore, NBC News, Washington. An NYPD police officer is in critical condition today after getting hit in the head with a cleaver. The suspect has been identified as 32-year-old Akram Jade. Officers say they initially confronted him yesterday when they saw him trying to remove a boot from his car. A chase began leading to an officer tackling the suspect to the ground. That's when Jode pulled the weapon from his waistband and hit the officer in the head. Three officers then fire, fired a total of 18 gunshots, hitting the suspect several times. He is also in critical condition. And people in Salem, Massachusetts are upset about a satanic temple that will soon be coming to the town. A former funeral home will be the new headquarters for the temple. According to the group's website, they're a nationally recognized religious and political group. They will also open their doors as an art gallery and witch hunt museum. Okay, tech fans, you've heard about it and you've seen it. Well, now you have the chance to buy it. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus will be in stores today. The phones are available for those that pre-ordered them, but others can place an order online. Both phones have faster processors, better cameras, and longer battery life than the older models, plus improved water resist resistance. If you're interested, you might want to grab one quick because I have, I have a feeling that they're going to sell out kind of fast here. All right, and three kids are being called heroes after they were caught on camera stopping a pair of car thieves. Late Monday night, the minister of a New Mexico church heard a commotion outside and was shocked by what she saw when she looked at her security footage. Thieves were breaking into her car that was parked right outside of the church. But those would-be robbers got a big surprise when three neighborhood kids armed with pipes and sticks ran up and scared them off. We didn't believe him when he said that someone was trying to break into the car. Uh -huh because that's how he acts. Should we be the heroes? Should we help them out? I was kind of I mean, scared. I was kind of scared, but not, not that much. <laughs> the minister says she's glad she had someone there to help. The sacrifices of America's greatest generation were remembered yesterday as an iconic D-Day flag arrived in the Netherlands with military honors. The flag arrived on a helicopter before it went on display at the National Military Museum. Thousands of soldiers died in the D-Day landing aimed at defeating the German invasion of Western Europe. And back here at home, Texas Governor Greg Abbott says Waco is the best it's ever been. The Republican talked about the city and the rest of Texas during the Waco Chamber of Commerce State of the State luncheon at McLean Stadium. Hundreds of community leaders were at the Baylor Club to hear from Abbott. He emphasized a need to lower taxes and to invest in training a well-qualified workforce. We caught up with the governor who told us Waco is becoming a leader in the state. I think Waco is doing better than it's ever done, and this stadium that we're in right now is one reason. Uh, the, the growth of Baylor University is another reason, uh, but really the, the geographic location uh, of Waco uh, makes a big difference. The cost of living is low here, uh, the regulatory environment is favorable here, uh, the economic opportunities are thriving. All right, he discussed strategies about how his office can work with Waco to build the economy even more, specifically by expanding Interstate 35. All right, and still ahead, another case of Zika has been reported in the Lone Star State. We'll tell you about that. Plus, a driver makes an incredible recovery after spinning out on the highway. And we'll get a check-in on the weather with meteorologist Bill Heckey. Stay with us.
I'm going to try this again now. We've got our, we got things hooked up now. I brought my own cup of coffee in my pocket. They're making me get up so early in the morning. We've got 75 at Killeen. We don't have too much out there. We've had a few clouds moving in though. And you can see a little bit moving up from the southwest and just get a little peak of some shower activity out to the northwest. So that's not going to really affect us. It may, if we can create a good outflow boundary, get into the uh, area this afternoon well to the northwest of us. Future track now, we're just going to gradually warm into the 80s. Then you'll notice a few showers over east of Interstate 45 and maybe into Brazos Valley. To our northwest, we'll see a few showers get into a part of the area. So this morning, we'll just look for some of those clouds moving in, get us into a old, basically low 70s. Midday, we're going to be up in the middle 80s, and then we'll take it to 92. I didn't really go for any showers, just off to the distant northwest of us. And then overnight tonight, 72. The showers, again, distant northwest, but I've got those toward morning. Now, what will happen is when we get that, then they should migrate in a little bit. So what I've done is I've got some early Saturday morning showers, and then a little bit of a chance in the afternoon. Then I think basically we're going to be dry until we get to next weekend, the end of the weekend. So that's what we'll be looking at. Just frontal boundary's been moving in, gets to the panhandle, moves our way a little bit, and washes out. So that's the way it is. Okay. That's the way it's going to be, too. Oh, okay. So there's still a chance for some kind of outdoor activity, a little bit? Oh, every, anybody okay. can do anything they want. I'd okay. say eye on the sky for the afternoon, this afternoon. Just okay. Slight chance, but I not think based. Not stopping football, not stopping. No, no, right. we're in that's, good that's shape. That's the key part, okay. Yeah, we're All in right. good shape. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Bill. All right, well, let's take a look at what's trending on the web. All right, so take a look at this. Let's see if we can start the video here. Okay, there it is. All right, so tired of racial, political, and economic tensions nationwide, two dancers created this project that you're looking at right now. Look at them go. Uh, it's a combination of art, music, and dance, and the dancers say they hope this video inspires people to just improve the world, you know, make it a nicer place, be nicer. Well, I'm an American Indian. My dance is a little bit different than that. <laughs> you think you have them beat, Bill? I, I got them beat. Okay. I got them beat. All Sometimes right. minds create rain. <laughs> All right, we'll have to see that on the break then. Uh, okay, so moving along, Taylor Swift and Calvin Harris. I bet you thought you'd never see them in the same room together again. Well, a German artist has found a way to make that happen, sort of. So what you're looking at is not really them, it's um, wax figures of the two musicians, and they can be found at the Berlin Beer Hall. For everyone who wants to see these two back together, I mean, here's their chance. What's right, going to happen right there? You might find me at that beer hall. <laughs> Oh man, Friday again. Okay, finally take a look at this crazy video. Let's see. Okay, here it is. A Camaro traveling in the passing lane made a remarkable recovery after the driver spun out from over correcting. The car was trying to merge into the middle lane when the car from the other side made the move, forcing that Camaro to jolt the wheel and eventually lose control. So the driver spins out, but thanks to some skillful handling, he's able to complete the turn and get back on the road safely. And I don't know if that was skillful handling or just <laughs> luck. You know just that? luck? I don't know. It's like a, a James Bond move there. <laughs> Huh. Like really? <laughs> but I don't think James Bond made the mess inside his car, that guy did. Yeah, let's hope he didn't have any coffee or anything. I was like eating in there, it would be a mess. Uh, but yeah, so that's a look at what's trending on the web today. Uh, but coming up on Early Texas Today, we still have another case of Zika that's been reported in the Lone Star State, and we'll tell you about that coming up next. Plus, a Colleen group is raising awareness about suicide. Hear from them after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. New information this morning following the Zika virus. A Texas border city just reported its first travel-related Zika case. Oscar Margain tells us why there could be more registered cases in the days to come. It's going to happen in Texas. It's going to happen in any state where these mosquitoes are. A 57-year-old Brownsville woman who returned from Mexico in December had symptoms of the virus. But back then, little was known about Zika. Her doctor thought she contracted dengue, but with the introduction of new state health guidelines, her case has been reclassified. It turns out that we had a case that you would say it's probable Zika, uh, which for all intensive purposes we would treat as Zika, 
you know, we would respond to this kind of case as a Zika case. Dr. James um, Castillo says the recent change has prompted eight That's other Texas counties to revisit previously diagnosed cases and revise them as well. Even though the cases are travel related, officials say fighting Zika on the border is important okay. because the type of mosquito that can carry the virus breeds in this region. So if a person has Zika in their blood, gets bit by this mosquito, and then is around other people, and that mosquito will go around and bite a few more people right there, it can transmit Zika to those people. For Delilah Aldrigetti, a mother of two, she's confident that researchers will eventually find a vaccine. However, she believes that local authorities need to do more to inform the public about how to protect themselves and their loved ones. I don't even think babies can have off. So are they, is there gonna be someone to make something like that? Or is the, um, county going to be spraying more often or what's what are they going to do? Experts say the best way to prevent Zika is to eliminate breeding grounds and take measures to avoid getting bitten. Health officials continue monitoring mosquitoes along the border for what they call the eventual local transmission of the virus. Currently, no mosquitoes have tested positive. In San Benito, near the Texas-Mexico border, Oscar Margain reporting. All right, and today in military matters, you may have seen them running or walking around Colleen and Harker Heights. Their message is simple. You are not alone. The group is called 22 Until None, and they're trying to raise awareness that 22 veterans commit suicide each day. To grab attention, the group is running and walking 22 miles a week. So I'm putting myself out there. I don't care if I save one. It's great. If I save none, at least it's a therapy for me. I truly believe that if you take one step to doing something that you didn't do before, you can help change even a small part of a community or a small part of a world. The group says they're doing the run now because September is Suicide Prevention Month, but they say they plan to keep the movement going because suicide is a topic that needs to be discussed year round. All right, and still ahead, George W. Bush is getting honored in Dallas. We'll tell you why after the break. Stay with us. Oh, it's not easy to throw a party for a former president, <laughs> but this is a heck of a party. All right, former President George W. Bush visited a new Dallas area elementary school named in his honor Thursday. The school has around 600 students from kindergarten through fourth grade, and here's what the former president had to say to the students there. Make good decisions, especially when people aren't watching you. Make the right choices in life, starting now. Bush also praised the school's dual language program, which urges students to learn both English and Spanish. All right, well, let's check in with Bill Heckey. Bill, let everyone at home know what the weather is looking like today one more time. Hit the New York office. Take a look at it. One thing you can see on our Skylive, uh, Skylive camera, it's still dark out. But we're in the low 70s, middle 70s, Colleen, now 75. Winds are not too much of a problem. Satellite radar, we show a little bit of cloud cover that's been working its way in. Everything is well out to the northwest. There's a short wave out there creating a good mass of thunderstorm rain shower activity. But we're not going to see too much of that in our area. Now on future track, what we'll do is warm it up gradually through the 80s into the 90s. We'll see some showers out around interstate. 45 in the Brazos Valley to our southeast and then coming in from the northwest will be a dissipating area of showers. We may get it in as close as like the Brownwood, Stephenville area and that's about all I think we're going to do. So I didn't go for any real showers for today, just gradually warm it back into the low 90s. We will have a few more clouds moving in this morning. Showers I kept to the distant northwest went for that 92 big number and then overnight tonight 72. Now. We'll start to increase clouds late tonight in that area out to the northwest. We'll have another one moving towards us. So what I did on Saturday, now don't get excited about the showers. Early in the morning, slight chance in the afternoon, and that's your seven day. That's good. Thank you, Bill. All right, and still ahead, the moon is on the loose. We'll figure out what's going on with that in today's viral video next. Stay with us.